Welcome back. All right, so in the previous video, we created a database. Now we're going to learn how to access this database. Okay, so we can do that using our PHP file. So this file is in the folder. Uh, in case you didn't create this file, it's a file named connect.php inside ZAMP htdocs my book. So this is our project folder and there's a file called connect.php. So how do we connect to a database using PHP? It's quite easy. So the things we need are, we need to know uh, the host. Now the host is the server name, okay? So we need to call the server and say, we're looking at this server. And then inside that server, we need to know the username uh, of the the username we need to know the password and then we need to know what database uh, the db that we are accessing so we have the host we have the username we have the password and we have the database so instead of just putting them there let's use variables so let's put a variable symbol here so that we have uh, the username, we have the password, and we have the DB. Now, the reason we're creating variables is because in case we want to change these things, it's going to be easy because we can simply change them at the top here, okay? So what's the database name? Now we have to go back here and see, it's called uh, my book underscore DB. So that's one is my book underscore DB. Put a semicolon. Now the password, as I said last time, the default password is empty. So we just put two inverted commas there. The username is root, okay? These are the default values. So you can add your own users if you want by going to this uh, privileges here, but we're not going to do that here. We'll use just the default values. And the host name is localhost. Now, if this was online, you'd put your host name, the server, address here maybe it could be 127.0.1 something like this or you can say something like facebook.com because that's still a server name but in here we are using localhost because the machine is on our uh, it's on the local we are on the local machine we are not online so let me move these a little bit up zoom in a bit in case you can't see properly now to connect is very simple. So we create a variable called connection. Now this variable will create the connection to our database so that we can just create the connection once and simply use this handle to access the database. So I'm going to say equals my SQLI. That's how it is. So because the database is called MySQL, but uh, I is the new version uh, of MySQL in terms of connecting using PHP. So we're going to say MySQI underscore connect, just like that. Now we need to pass in these variables. First of all, we need to pass in the host comma. We need to add the username. So as you can see, this is actually a function. MySQL connect is a function and we are calling this function. Now this function comes with PHP. It was created by the makers of PHP. So once we call it, we are passing in some arguments in there and it requires four arguments, okay? It, it, it requires three, you can put three arguments, that's fine, it will work. But if you put the fourth one, which uh, tells you which database you're going to access. So we're going to put off all of them. So this one, password, uh, and comma, we're going to put the DB. So this is the information PHP requires in order to connect to our database. So how do we know that we've connected is that we don't get an error, then we know everything is fine. So let me save this, go here to our browser and drag and drop the file. And as usual, put localhost there where we need to put it like this, 
Let me put it right there. Okay, so we see an empty page, which means everything went well. Now, if we mistyped something, like let me just put an H there. We're going to see an error, something like this. Uh, it's going to say no such host is, is known. So you know that it's the host with a problem. If I put root here, I change there. It's going to tell me that uh, access denied for user, whatever user this is, okay? So that's how you know what's going on. If I put here another, it's going to say it doesn't know that database, unknown database. So that's how you know that this is where the problem is. So like this, we've already made a connection. Now, once we make a connection, in order to save some data inside our uh, database is also very easy. Now, if you look at these columns here, there's ID, there's user ID, there's first name and all that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, ID here will be handled by the database itself. So we don't need to worry about ID. We also don't need to worry about date because it's going to add a date automatically. All we need to make sure is that we are adding the information we need here. So, for example, we need to provide a user ID. Now, for just for testing purposes, I'm going to show you how to add data here and read the data. So we're just going to add the first name and the last name. That's it for now. So to do that, let me create variables because variables is a good idea. I'm going to say first name is equal to. So let me give myself a first name. And then I'm also going to say last name and give myself a last name. So now I have a variable containing that and another variable containing that. So I want to add this data into the database. So what I will do is create what is called a query string. So I'm going to say query is equal to. So the query will be in inverted commas because it's a sentence. So when I'm inserting data into the database, I'll say insert into now I need to know the database name so I'm going to say insert into actually not the database name I need to know because we've already provided the database I need to know the table I'm inserting into so the table here that we are doing this to is users so I'm going to say insert into users now open close brackets and then say values open close bracket so this is how a query looks like to insert data so in here you specify the columns you want to edit here you specify the values you want to add in those columns in the same order so for example i want to add first name <coughs> comma last name like this so these are column names these should match what you wrote here for the columns. If it doesn't, it will cause an error. So make sure that the columns are exactly the same. So I'll copy this since I have named my variables exactly like the columns. So I'll copy this and put it here. And then I'll just put the variable uh, dollar sign. So what I'm saying is I'm getting this from here, this variable. So whatever is inside here will be represented here. And now since uh, all text requires inverted commas, since I'm already using these big inverted commas outside, these double quotes, I'm going to use a single quote for this one and a single quote for that one. So the reason is that this sentence in MySQL should come with these commas because what I'm posting in here is a word and it's not a number. So it should have inverted commas. And I've already I've only used used these small ones because I've used the big ones outside here to avoid confusion with PHP. So what I'm saying here is in this in this column add this value. In this column add that value. Okay? 
So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole sentence at once. So query is equals to insert into users, blah, 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 blah. So once you are done with that, this is just a query. We haven't done anything to it. We're just, we're just creating a sentence. If I go ahead and echo this sentence, you can see what it contains. So if I go back to my uh, page and then I... So this is what's contained inside query. Insert into users, first name, last name, values. And then you see here, the name, the first name and last name have been replaced because we gave those variables there, which is uh, pretty cool. So this is the string that is sent to the database. So how do we send this to the database? This is what we do. We say, my SQL I query. So we're telling it to query. So what are we querying? We are querying the, the string that we've created, which we've put in a query like that. But we must not forget that we need the connection to the database. So we put the connection here as an argument as well and a comma like that. So just this is enough to save in the database. So let's give it a try. Let me refresh. Of course, we won't see anything here because we haven't told the program to echo anything. However, if we go to the uh, database and refresh, we'll see that there's a new record here. Let me zoom out. So you see the ID, first name is saved in here, second name is, last name is saved here, and you see it has created a date and an ID for us automatically. Okay. So this is how you create. If I run this again, it will create another record. So let me go back here and actually refresh the page again. And you were going to see another record in here if I refresh the page. Uh oh, I am not seeing a new name, a new, what's going on here? So something went wrong here. So what I could do is check the error and say echo my SQLI error and then use this connection right here so that in case there was an error in there we're going to see it so let me go back and run it so it's saying duplicate entry zero for key primary okay so what's happening here is that it's refusing to add another one because the ID is zero. Since we are not providing an ID, it's automatically adding a zero because this is an integer. So what we forgot to do is to tell it to auto increment. So let me go back to structure here. And then right here on ID, uh, where is this? If I go down here on ID, I can say change so that I can edit this column. And I forgot to add this AI auto increment ticket and save. So now that uh, it's done, I can go back to browse and then I can now run my, and there's no error. So if I go back here, open that, I'm going to see another entry with one and zero, oh, one and two. Okay, so this is how you add records. Now, how do you read records? So to read the record, you simply uh, do another query. So in the next video, we're going to see how to do the read query. I'll see you in the next video.